What's up everyone and welcome to another Minecraft Bedrock Command Block video. In this video we're going to be looking at how to make this sword in the stone door. That is a door that opens when you break an end rod. The end rod with a candle on top of it just kind of looks like a sword and so we have commands and a structure block that will delete the floor underneath you when you break the end rod. Then it'll give you slow falling so you don't die from fall damage and reset itself. I'll also be going over two different versions of this, one that uses structure blocks so that you can add more decoration, and one that doesn't use any structure blocks so that it's a little more simplified. The way this works is you have a command block constantly checking to see if the end rod is there. When it notices that the end rod is no longer there, it'll fill in the floor with air, basically deleting it. Then you have a structure block or a command block that will replace the floor after the player has had enough time to fall through. But let's jump into it. So first you have this repeating command block that's set to unconditional needs redstone with the command execute if block, then the coordinates of the end rod, and then air. So it's basically checking those coordinates to see if they ever turn into air. And so then run slash fill, and then the coordinates for the floor. So, whenever it notices that that end rod has turned into air, it will fill the floor in with air, basically deleting the floor so that you fall through. And then coming out of that repeating command block, we need a chain command block set to conditional always active with the command slash set block coordinates air. Now these coordinates are going to be next to the repeating command block, and they are going to delete the redstone block that's touching the repeating command block, thus turning it off because it needs redstone to check for the end rod. Then coming off of that redstone block, we need at least three repeaters on maximum delay and a redstone torch to invert the signal. This is sending power both to a structure block and to this impulse block right here. It's going to be impulse, unconditional, needs redstone, and it's going to be the thing that sets the redstone block where it goes. So it's going to have the same coordinates as the chain block that deletes the redstone block. Coming out of the impulse, we have a chain command block set to unconditional, always active, with the slash effect at E, the coordinates of your tube that the player is going to be falling through, that gives it slow falling 5, 0, true. We'll be going more over this later on in the video, so don't worry if it seems complicated. Basically, the X, Y, and Z coordinate are one corner of your tube, and then the DX, DY, and DZ are a modifier of that number, so that it, it turns it into a rectangle selector. This also makes it multiplayer friendly, because it'll select all the players in the tube at the same time, but we'll talk more about that later on. For now, let's talk about the structure block. So you can use structure blocks to save or load builds, and you can also power them with redstone. If you plan on using the structure block, I would recommend you do it first. That is, build the floor with the sword, then save it with a structure block before you start messing with the commands and before you start digging a tube. That is just because if you don't have any experience messing with structure blocks, they can be a little strange. But start off by placing a structure block next to your build, make sure that it's not going to be overlapped in your build so it doesn't save the structure block, and then we're going to edit these coordinates over here. Start off by messing with the offset so that it doesn't select the structure block or the ground or anything that it shouldn't. Just get it flush with one corner of your build and then go to the size and start making it big enough to select the entire thing. So like right here, we see that it's a little bit too big, so we need to lower the Z by one. Luckily, the numbers are color coordinated on bedrock. So you can see this red line right here represents the red X. So we need to make this big enough to select the whole thing. And then we don't need most of the roof. We really only need the section that we're going to be deleting using our command block. The more precise you are right now, the easier it will be to load it in using the redstone later on. So, try to get it as precise as you possibly can, and when you're ready, type in a name that you remember in this bar right here. So we're just going to call this Door 2. And then scroll down, make sure that it says Include Entities, and Remove Blocks is off, and then make sure that the Redstone Save Mode is Save to Disk. The difference between Save to Memory and Save to Disk in Bedrock is memory is only temporary, where Save to Disk saves it into the world file so that you can pull it up later on. And then you can turn off the bounding box down here with this very last toggle. And all that's left is to click save. This will save the structure, it'll give you a confirmation, and now you can delete the structure block. Unless the structure block is already where you want your redstone to be, then you can just switch it to load mode. By clicking on the structure block up at the very top, you can switch it to load, and then you type in whatever you named your other structure right here. So in my case, I named it door 2. Also, capital letters matter, so make sure that if you capitalized some of the parts, that is also capitalized. And then we need to make sure that it's selecting our structure exactly as we saved it. So if you saved it flush with all of the corners, it should look exactly the same. 
You can also use the bounding box to help you see exactly what it's selecting, but just basically tweak the offset until it is exactly as you saved it. It should look exactly the same. Now, this also might be easier for you to just build it somewhere, save it, and then load it in somewhere else so that you don't have to worry about it being perfect. You can just load it in the middle of a field like so, and this is why I recommend doing that first. You know, if you load it into the middle of a field, then now you can just go ahead and dig the tube underneath it, and you don't have to worry about it being exactly right. But once you get it in the right position, go ahead and click load, just to make sure that nothing moved, that it looks exactly the same as it did. You also want to make sure that the structure block is farther enough away that it doesn't overwrite itself. But after you get the structure block done, you're ready to dig the hole and make the commands. So let's talk more about this funky command right here that I didn't mean to delete. So we'll just go ahead and rewrite it so that you understand exactly how this works. So it's going to be a chain, unconditional, always active, with the command slash effect. And you can actually use at P if you only want it to be single player. If only one person's ever going to be going through this, you can just use at P and don't worry about the coordinates. But to make it multiplayer friendly, we need to do at E and then type in bracket. And then we need to go find one of the corners of our tube. So let's go over here and find one of the corners of our tube and write down the coordinates of that corner. You also need to find out which direction the coordinates are going to reach the other side of the tube. So in my case, the X is in the negative and it's going in the negative direction. And then the Z is positive going in the positive direction. So just start off by writing your coordinates down in this format. So X equals negative 65, Y equals 70, Z equals 29. And now we just need to add the modifiers to these numbers to make sure that it's a rectangle selection and not just three coordinates. The way you do this is after the coordinate, you're gonna type in space, comma, and then DX equals and then a number that is the size of your tube. So in my case, my tube is 10 wide. So I'm gonna type in negative 10 because it goes from negative 65 to negative 75. So to get from negative 65 to negative 75, we need to subtract 10. And so that's why the DX equals negative 10. And so then for the Y value, we're gonna type in DY equals negative 70 because we want it to go all the way down to zero. You also don't have to be super precise. You can always make the selection bigger than your tube. So like I could do DX equals negative 20 and DY equals negative 100, just as long as it selects the entire tube so that the player doesn't ever get skipped. And so then for our Z coordinate, again, our tube is about 10 wide. So since it's going off in the positive direction, we need to do DZ equals 10 because we just need to add 10 to 29 rather than subtracting 10 from 29. So just to further illustrate how exactly this works, our first coordinate is negative 65, and we want it to reach negative 75. So we need to subtract 10 from negative 65 to reach negative 75. So our DX needs to be negative 10. And then my Y coordinate is 70, and we want it to reach zero. So we need to subtract 70 from 70 to get to zero. So our DY is going to be negative 70, because 70 minus 70 equals zero. But then my Z coordinate needs to go from 29 to 39. So we need to add 10. So our DZ is going to be 10 because you know, 10 plus 29 equals 39. And so that's how this selection mode works. So then after this, we need to type in slow underscore falling to add the effect slow falling. And then five is the duration of the slow falling. You might need to tweak this number depending on how far your tube is. But for me, five works just fine. Just test it in survival to make sure it gives you slow falling in time to hit the ground. And then if you want to turn off the spirally particle effects that float around the player, type in zero true. The zero is the modifier for the effect. So zero just doesn't modify it at all. And then true turns off particles. You can just leave off the zero and true if you don't care about the particles though, and it will work just the same. And now it should all just work. Now it's time to test it. So let's break the redstone block and just make sure that everything is activating the way it should. You can always click on the command blocks to get feedback. So if it says no targets match the selector, that just means that it works, but there's no targets within that selector rectangle. But if we go in here and we break the end rod, it should give us slow falling and replace the floor. Also be sure to switch to survival and just check to make sure that it gives you slow falling for the correct duration so that you don't actually die when you hit the ground. So we're gonna type in slash game mode S to switch to survival and then we're gonna break the end rod and fall, Wee! And it should slow us down just in time to hit the ground. So we won't take any fall damage and it works completely. 
So now, really quick, I will show you a more simplified version that doesn't use structure blocks if you don't feel comfortable using the structure blocks. This one will just use the fill command to replace the floor. So here we have the same thing. We have an end rod that when you break it, the floor goes away. Most of it is exactly the same, like this repeating command block is exactly the same. It's simply set to unconditional needs redstone with the execute if block, then the coordinates for the end rod, air to check and see if that end rod has become air with the run slash fill the coordinates for the floor. And so this will delete the floor when the player breaks the end rod, just like in the other one. This was actually my first draft of this machine, just figuring it out. And so this one is just simplified. You know, it doesn't use the structure blocks, so you can't have as much detail because you just need to use a command to fill in the floor. But then coming off of the repeating, we have a conditional always active with the slash set block then the coordinates for the redstone block, and then air. So this turns off the repeating command block. And then a bunch of repeaters to add delay to make sure the floor doesn't fill back in before the player goes all the way through. This also delays when it gives you the slow falling. But we have an impulse command block set to unconditional needs redstone that resets that redstone block. And then we have our chain command block that adds the effect slow falling to the closest player. So this one isn't multiplayer friendly, it just targets the closest player. So if one player is the only one who's ever going to be using this, you can just use at P rather than dealing with all of those coordinates. And then since we're not using a structure block, we need a command block that resets the end rod. So a chain command block that has slash set block, the coordinates of the end rod, and then end rod. And then it doesn't actually need to be set to conditional, I just had it set there because. It, it, it doesn't matter if you have it conditional or unconditional. And then the final chain command block is what fills in the floor. So it's going to be slash fill, then the coordinates of the floor, and then whatever you want your floor block type to be. So in this case, slash fill coordinates stone. And so since that one doesn't use structure blocks, you can't be quite as detailed since you need the command blocks to actually replace the end rod and the floor and any other decorative blocks that you've placed. But that's all we got for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think and what you would like to see in the future. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and I will do my best to try to help you out. I've still been working on these command block tutorials, such as a quest giver NPC and an NPC store, so check those out too if you're interested. And since this video is getting kind of long, we'll end it here. I really hope it made sense, I hope it wasn't too complicated. Let me know again if you have any questions at all. But until next time, I've been your host, Omledu, hopefully teaching you a command block trick or two. And reminding you, as always, don't forget to have fun. Bye bye.